All right, it's been a hot minute. I haven't looked at Yu-Gi-Oh cards in God knows how long. Uh, I don't really remember anything about the game. Honestly, that's a good thing. You should just keep everything you know about Yu-Gi-Oh in a little black box in your mind, take it out, and bury it six feet deep in your backyard. I do remember that if a card says win the game, it's probably pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta remember that from when you show me cards. If you could do me a solid when you show me a card, can you tell me what year it's from? I'll tell you the general time period. Sure. Okay. So Obelisk the Tormentor, when did this card come out? This came out around 2006-ish, 2008-ish. Oh, okay. So still pretty oh. early Yu-Gi-Oh, relatively. Okay. Um. So this is the star. If I remember, okay, I don't remember this correctly. The stars, <laughs> I don't think matter too much. The Divine Beast, I think, is also very not relevant unless it's like with the effect. But let me read what it actually does. Requires three tributes to normal summon. Cannot be normal set. So that means you just can't play the card. It has to be tribute. You have to sacrifice three monsters. <laughs> oh my god, I'm already scared. This card's <laughs> normal summon can't be negated. When normal summon cards and effects cannot be activated, neither player can target this card with card effects. Once per turn during the end phase, if this card was special summon send into the graveyard, you can tribute two monsters, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. This card cannot declare an attack. This turn, this effect is activated. Wait, hold your fucking horses. What? <laughs> if you special, if you send it to the graveyard, does it come back? on the board after you're done or you have to pull from the graveyard nah, nah, his, ass is, his ass is cooked he's gone bro okay he's, <laughs> See ya. he's gone okay you can trip two monsters destroy all monsters your opponent controls okay uh that's a pretty good effect now from a hearthstone perspective that card is bonkers and you get was that good enough hold on a second wait it doesn't say win the game it just says clear the board but clearing the board can win you the game that's cope that's not true. <laughs> there's, there's that, listen, I've played enough Hearthstone to know that's not true. Twisting Nether literally just says win the game. I mean, it, it kind of like if you can't target it, like if neither player can target it, you could just always have this on the board for a cheeky board clear. But I think this is bad. I'm going to go with it's bad. I don't think this is very good. You are 100% right. This card yes. throughout almost its entire lifespan has just been absolute cheeks. There have been builds that use like monsters that like try and revive themselves like turn after turn like the frog engine where theoretically you just set up a bunch of frogs and like you could just tribute them for obelisk but uh there's a reason uh, this card uh only saw play in that and literally nothing else so uh yeah good good job Rarin. let's go let's go i still got it i still got it one for one <laughs> i'm sure this will hold throughout the video it's actually so fucking spooky looking at these cards man <laughs> don't, don't worry this has a little bit less text dude this art is bonkers all right what year is this from this is probably an old one i think this came out this came out in 2002 i was two years old dog 2002 uh, you were two years old i'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a zoomer show me more subway servers okay uh soul exchange this is a spell card target okay so i just gotta ask because i honestly don't remember do spell cards have to be in play before you can use them or you can just cast them from hand you can just cast them from hand okay okay i just had that, that's trap cards that have to be in play that's yes. what it is Target one monster your opponent controls this turn. If you tribute a monster, you must tribute that monster. Wait, what the hell? Target one monster your opponent controls this turn. If you tribute a monster, you must control that. You must tribute that monster. What the fuck does that even mean? For, for all As intents and purposes, you choose a monster your opponent controls. If you need to sacrifice a monster, oh, you can use their monster instead. Oh, wow, that's some weird text right there. That's a 2002 card right there. As <laughs> look, if you controlled it. I look, guess man, I could the translation, the rest. Google Translate didn't really exist back then. You cannot conduct your battle phase this turn. You activate this card. I can use my opponent's monster to tribute for one of my monsters. Yes. That, okay, that that seems really good i guess they could like counterspell it or something but god if they don't have it that's so fucking nasty and you just they, they went through their whole turn i mean this has to be like no way this is not good this is insane isn't it this might be one of the this is this is the best card by far obviously we're only two in but this, <laughs> two this cards in. The top. yeah this card's this card's <laughs> sick yeah you're actually right this card, this card is actually yes! pretty sick Woo! it took people a while but after enough like experimentation people realized like wait i could just kill your guy to summon my guy Robin Goblin. <laughs> okay, what, what year is this from? I'm going to take a guess. 2000. I'm not actually sure. Hold on. I got to pull this up. Robin Goblin's a trap card. Each time a monster you control inflicts battle damage to your opponent, your opponent discards one random card. This lad came out in 2004. Okay. Okay. First of all, go to name. Robin Goblin. That's hilarious. Okay. So if you actually get to swing, this card's probably pretty great. How many monsters do you really need to... Wait, your control inflicts battle damage to your opponent. Hold on. Does battle damage only mean like using your attack, its attack, or does like special effects work? Uh, It's only if your monster attacks or something attacks into like your defense position monster, but your monsters like cheeks are bigger. 
Oh, okay. Cheeks are bigger. Okay. Okay. You're putting this card in your deck, which is already one card. So if you get one swing on your opponent, you're going one for one. If you get two swings, then obviously it gets a little bit better. But like, I don't think that's really relevant in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, why would I want to discard a card when I can just win the game? The value, so, dude. The no, value. It's, 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 it's bad. It's bad. Like in Hearthstone, like there are cards that have discarded your opponent's hand uh, or like just random cards in your opponent's hand. If you get their win condition, then yeah, it seems like the dream, but often it just doesn't do fucking anything. It's probably like maybe okay, but I'm going to lean to it's pretty bad. Yeah, you're right. This card sucks. <laughs> Woo! God damn, I'm killing it. I, as a kid, I put this card into literally every deck because I was like, oh my God, if I just hit them, I win. Like, if this card <laughs> hits five cards True. out of their hand, it's a plus four. Think of the value. <laughs> like, mom, give me the credit card. I'm going to fucking Costco. Robin Goblin Costco. That was your name in high school, right? <laughs> uh, bro, catch me in the parking lot eating those rotisserie chickens. Yo, sh dude, not even kidding. That's the maximum value in life. Those chickens are like it's three bucks I or some want. shit. God bless They're America. They're fucking goaded. They're the goaded. They ever raise the price of rotisserie chickens in Costco? I'm fucking fuming. I'll be outside. What the fuck is this? Phantom of Chaos? Okay. Again, probably around like 2000 ish. 2007, um, actually. Oh, okay. A little later. Uh, okay. Any battle. Da Wait, this has zero attack and zero defense. Any battle damage your opponent takes from battles involving this card becomes zero. Any battle damage your opponent takes from battles involving this card becomes zero. Okay. Once per turn, you could target one effect monster in your graveyard. Banish that target. And if you do, until the end phase, this card's name and attack become that monster's name and attack. And it gains the monster's effects. You must control this face up card to activate to resolve this effect. Holy shit. That's a spicer right there, bro. In Hearthstone, there's often the point where if I could add a third copy of a card, I would, but you can't. But this is almost that. Like if that minion dies, I get the card. This doesn't seem that hard to summon. So I would imagine this is great, but I'm second guessing myself here. Is this good? Like it has to be good. In Hearthstone, this would see play, right? If this sees play in Hearthstone, this sees play in Yu-Gi-Oh. That's the logic, right? All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm going with my god. This is good. Unfortunately, this card was not very good historically. <laughs> oh! So the first problem is that you have to actually get a monster into your graveyard that has a strong enough effect that you do want to copy. And there were some decks, like there's an archetype called Lightsworn, where the entire gimmick is you just like send your whole deck to the graveyard and like you would use Phantom of Chaos to copy like their boss monster, which was a big fuck off dragon that basically just nuked the board. But unfortunately, like outside of maybe exactly that and this being like a cute card in it, every other archetype or uh, cheese of trying to just get cards Cards into the graveyard to turn this guy online has unfortunately been pretty bad. Inter Dude, that actually blows my mind. This card's not playable. I'm just going to be honest. That, that's crazy. That basically says win the game for the record. <laughs> I just want everyone to be aware. Like, I can't believe it. It hurts though. It could okay. be two countesses. You could have six it invitations. Yo, fun fact for you, by the way. Fun fact for you. Uh, the meta after you raided the Countess, the Countess actually became one of the best cards in the game. Let's fucking go, dude. <laughs> I told you, I had, to, I had to let you know. Yo, let me ask you a question, by the way. Would Patches see play in Yu-Gi-Oh? Oh, 100%. It'd be like the most Dude. broken shit of all time. <laughs> okay, so a little tangent here. I asked the magic creator of like, hey, like would Patches see play? Like, obviously I didn't tell them. Like I just showed them the card and said like, what are your thoughts on it? And she told me it was bad. And I was like, how is it bad in magic? Like there's absolutely no way it's bad in magic. You summon a understand. guy. It's it, insane. It's free. Okay, sorry. I I had to ask that question. I'm glad. I'm glad Patch is just ingeniously like the greatest Hearthstone card ever. Dude, a fuck patches. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. I could go on like a 40 minute university lecture on why I think that's like the worst designed Hearthstone card in history. Uh, Vanity's Fiend. When did this card come out? This looks like a 2000 card there. This is based not off the art. Came out in 2006. Uh, cannot be special summoned. Neither player can special summon monsters. Oh my god. Okay, this is the, this is the peca most Picante card you've shown me. I don't even think the attack and defense is really relevant here. Can't be special summoned. The problem with this card is if you're not ahead, it's garbage. Hearthstone's kind of had effects like this, where it's like an aura that stops something from happening, but generally it just goes to, hey, I already did something. You played this card too late, and now it's over. This is a tech card, but it's almost like a bad tech card, because especially because it looks like it, it takes, like you have to tribute a monster to summon this, right? Yep. So bad, horrible, <laughs> hasn't seen any play. Uh, I wouldn't call it like the worst card on Planet Earth, but yeah, this card, it's it's a okay. really cute <laughs> card. It's a tech card, but this card is, this card ain't Picante. <laughs> 
See, you always want these effects to be real because it's like, oh, like, this would be so cool to completely shut down my opponent. But then, yeah, always in practice, it's always like, oh, this is just this feels awful. I just wasted my whole turn for this. You're, you just stare at this guy and then he gets hit by a bolt of fucking lightning and your opponent combos off. And I'm like, sick. Road Warrior. OK, so now we're moving on to the next stage of Yu-Gi-Oh, right? With the synchro stuff. It's this been nine. around since like 2008, I want to say. Road Synchron, two or more non-tuner monsters. So you need two or more non-tuner monsters to summon this card, correct? Yeah, so there's a little area. Uh, there's a little like additional piece of game. I don't even know what to call it. It's called the extra deck, but essentially right. you could put 15 certain types of cards like XE, Synchros, whatever, and you can always ex access those monsters as long as you meet the summoning requirement. And the summoning requirement is using Road Synchron and two or more non-tuner monsters to make a Road Warrior. Okay. Okay. Uh, once per turn, you get special summon one level two or lower warrior or machine type monster from your deck. See, I don't know how good warrior or machine type monsters are. I would imagine if you're going to special summon them, they probably have a pretty decent effect. What does it mean by like level two? Oh, uh, it's like the little stars on them. When does a star become level two? For level <laughs> oh one? my God. Like, I don't even... This is like the one time I think in like the 10 trillion episodes <laughs> we've had where this has come. We're like, we had to actually, actually explain levels. Dude, I literally said at the start of this video, the stars don't matter. And here we are. All right. I uh, fucking, I, I guess stars do matter. Tell that to Galileo, well, I guess. When, when do they, <laughs> when do they, when do they go from level one to level two? For each star a monster has, that is one level. So, oh, so if it has two stars, it's level two. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I was expecting like eight to be level two. Like oh, what this the guy, fuck? But okay. What? I don't know. I mean, what Where did the logic? Mean, dude? Dude, two equals eight, bro. <laughs> bro, I gotta I don't know. I was, to It's you, school. dude. You, you're acting like Yu-Gi-Oh makes literally any sense to anyone who doesn't play it. Are you out of your mind? Look, this man, is I'm this game needs. A, you need a Harvard University doctorate to just understand the mechanics of this video game. Unless there is some kind of combo I don't know about, I would assume that this is just not a very good card. But I'm ready for you to be like, no, dude. You can actually special summon the greatest level two monster of your life, and you win the game. <laughs> you're actually correct. In yeah. which way? <laughs> you're right. <laughs> it's bad. Or you can special summon a level two. It's not the fact that like special summoning a level two monster from your deck is bad. It's actually like a really broken effect because like just as time goes on, like there are a lot of like, you know, just like super silly cards that like Konami has printed and like just grabbing one of those from the deck for free is like pretty good. But just summoning yeah. a monster like this that requires like a really specific material and it requires like two monsters, like it's just not worth the effort for the amount of reward you put in. Blind obliteration? What the hell? <laughs> Six sided die twice and destroy all face up monsters with level and ranks lower than the total roll. What the fuck? Ignore the ranks thing. The ranks don't matter. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I'm gonna assume this is garbage. Like I, I would assume okay, what, what is the what is the average you get? Six? Chat, type in the comments down below. What is the average of two dice rolls? It's interesting because it's like this is literally the moment where you go like you activated my trap card and then you just fucking send this shit and just be like the, it all comes down to a dice roll. Dude, imagine <laughs> saying out loud Yu-Gi-Oh comes down to a dice roll as a Hearthstone player. I mean, okay. arguably it does. Have you seen how fast this game goes, dude? People are getting no, new I, turn I have one. It. I saw a TikTok clip the other day of Exodia on turn one in Master Duel, and I actually was laughing out loud because cool, it's so I stupid. Yu-Gi-Oh is decided by the dice roll, baby. It's crazy. Yeah, your opening hand is so like relevant in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's insane. Yeah. But this is so like this is literally like your roll. Like imagine. Like, you know this card's being played if your opponent just brings in a couple of die. Like, they're like, all right, I just need this just in case. You never know. I mean, it's bad. It has to be bad. There's no way this card's playable. Yeah, this card is, but, <laughs> this card is horrible. Okay. I don't think... If you see a card that says roll a dice, <laughs> just just tab out, close, close your browser, turn off your monitor, and go to bed. You already know that shit's bad. Quick question. Have you ever played Pokemon before? Like, the, the card game for it? No, never. Okay, so... I haven't played Pokemon. I played it the I played it last year. And my first introduction to this was a card. I don't remember what it was, but it was on my opponent's side. And it said, your opponent flips a coin. If it's tails, they skip their turn. Bro, oh. I rolled seven tails in a row and I didn't want to play Pokemon anymore. <laughs> like, Yo, I gotta get into Pokemon. I wanna gamble. There was a format in Yu-Gi-Oh called Zodiac. Like Zodiac, this archetype called Zodiac was like without a doubt like the best deck. Like when you went to a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament, the average 
top cut representation of players' decks, like 28 out of the top 32 people would be on Zodiac. And people are so <laughs> desperate for just answers. And this was one of the one of them that they decided on because they were like, well, theoretically, if I'm always rolling a seven, then yeah, it's just, just clear. it just clears the board. It's good enough. They made this card as a response to a deck. Is that what you're saying? I don't. Or is, I think that Satan crawled out of hell and slipped this into the booster pack when no one was looking. <laughs> Guarded treasure. This is this spell card? Activate this card by discarding five cards. Draw two cards. While this is on the field, draw two cards instead of one for your normal draw during your draw phase. What in the hell? Okay, so I have to clarify a couple things just so I understand. Because in Hearthstone, it might work differently. If I have two cards in my hand, I play this card. Does the effect still go? Like, can I play the card? No, you always have to discard five cards. So basically what this card is saying is if you don't play this card the very first turn, it's absolutely useless. <laughs> Look, man, maybe later on you could draw five cards. In Hearthstone, okay, like if you're, if you go first, you play this card. Well, you have to go second to play this on the first turn, but I want this. Would I sacrifice five cards to draw two cards per turn? No, I probably wouldn't. That seems really bad. So when you give this has to be bad, unless I'm very wrong. So like the only reason I think this card might be good is because maybe actually in Hearthstone, Hearthstone, there's actually there might be synergy with this card, depending on what class they put it into it. So maybe in Yu-Gi-Oh! they have this. OK, hold on. I'm rethinking everything. This might be good. There are cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! that say, like, if you discard this, something good happens, right? Yeah, there are a lot of archetypes like that. OK. I'm going to flip my switch here. This card's good because you just discard five cards. This is arguably one of the worst cards ever printed. Fuck, I should have with my gut. Kate, listen, I got co I coped there. I coped so hard. five cards, dude. How is this good? I, I should have went with my gut. I, for the record, I was right. And then I was like, no, I'll cope really hard. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I kind of remember these things. Okay. Deco Talker Heat Soul. Jesus Christ, what a name. Two plus Cyburst monsters with different attributes. All right, you're going to have to explain that again. What the hell is that? That's what you have to discard or tribute to summon this. You need to send, for all intents and purposes, at least two or more monsters that are Cyburst type. Uh, this gains 500 attack for each monster it points to. So that's like the arrows, yeah. I guess. And th there's there. I noticed that on this card, there are three arrows that are actually colored and that I'm guessing it only means those arrows and not all of them. Yep. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Look, 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 see how good I am at this? You can, you can pay 100 <laughs> life points, draw one card. Then if your life points are 2,000 or less, you can apply this effect. Banish this card from the field. And if you do, special summon one link three or lower Cybers monster from your extra deck, except, deco except for this card. You can only use this effect of this card once per turn. So if you banish this card from the field, does it still go in your graveyard? No, it goes it into a very spooky place called the banished pile. Oh, okay, so it's just gone. Yeah, it's, it's just like it's see, just see, see you later. for all intents and purposes, his ass is cooked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there. you're definitely not playing this card uh for the first effect. You you have to be playing this for the second effect. So this really comes down to, in my opinion, how good that special summon can be. I obviously don't know any other monsters for this effect. And this is kind of a cop out answer. I hate doing this, but like if there's actually a card that is worth summoning for this effect, this card potentially could be great. But on average, I think this card's probably pretty bad. Uh yeah, you're right. <laughs> but people okay. were playing this almost exclusively for the first effect to just draw a card. Really? Uh, the theory was, is you just have a bunch of monsters that just make this guy and then you would draw a card and ideally it would be a hand trap or a card that draws you more cards so you could draw more hand traps and then on your opponent's turn you could draw a card and ideally it would be like a hand trap. Uh, people figured out pretty quickly that that, that shit sucks. <laughs> that shit sucks. Oh my god, what the fuck is this thing? It's a little rat. Is that man. a lizard with a mustache? A little rat man. It's not a rat to you. <laughs> rat gang, rise up. How do you pronounce this? Uh, Iperia? Oh no, I don't speak Let's Spanish. Go. I think the first one. <laughs> True. Si, senor. Um, if this card is summoned, draw one card. You can only use this effect. Once per turn. That's it. What the hell? So it's it's like cycle if you if you summon this card. Do you need to tribute my a, beloved. <laughs> this is literally what it is. Like, I was just about to ask. Do you have to do you have to tribute something to summon this? Nope. You can just summon it. Okay. Was Pot of Greed in the game when this card was released? <laughs> no, Pot of Greed was banned. Uh, I'll, I'll just tell you the year it came out. 2019. What? <laughs> There's no way in 2019 this card's seeing play. Novice Engineer hasn't seen play since like 2015, 2016, realistically. Bro, I love her. Uh, I'd play her in a heartbeat. It draws a card. She's not, 
I don't even think she's in standard anymore. Like, it's just like, they, there's no reason to have her. This game sucks. But we need to get a petition going. Bring back Novice Engineer. To get her back? Oh, there's way better cards than that, bro. We no. got one man to draw five, dude. Like, we, we don't need that shit anymore. What yeah, is that's this? what I'm saying. <laughs> But in Yu-Gi-Oh, like, dude, cycling a card for this, not worth it. This has to be horrible. Unless, no, there's no way. I'm not coping myself. It's bad. It's bad. Uh, <laughs> this card actually is pretty good. <laughs> dude, no. Why? What? No, okay. you're trolling. <laughs> I'm serious. I wish I, I wish I was trolling, bro. Okay. How, what, what, what reality is this playable? I, okay. I can't I can't wait to hear this. So on release, everyone like obviously like on release fucking draws a card. The card sucks fucking poo poo pee pee. Like get the shit yeah. out of my get the shit out of exactly. my bowl. But okay. people realized that it sets up a column. <laughs> oh my god, I have to explain mech knights. So there's it sets up a what? <laughs> a column? Oh my god. Are we doing to... spreadsheets in Yu-Gi-Oh now? What is this? Oh my <laughs> Okay, okay. For, for all intents and purposes, I have to explain this in like the most simple way possible. Like, this is gonna sound like okay. witchcraft, but you know how in Yu-Gi-Oh there are zones. Sure. Yeah, yeah. The zones. Yeah, yeah. So is it- there is an archetype of monsters called Mech Knights, and they care about cards in zones. And Aperia would basically just set up a zone for you for free <laughs> that was just a good enough normal summon because it just replaced itself and it just set up a zone for you uh but okay, the a- so i don't really know what that meant <laughs> but <laughs> don't don't worry i'm glad the, the actual answer okay. was there uh there's an archetype called sprite of level two monsters and they need a monster that's level two on the board to basically spam them out from the hand and guess what level Aperia is level two so they just played it because oh, okay. it draws so it's a card not, it's not it's even play, it's not even played for its effect then right like i guess cycling is fine but you're just playing this because of that one interaction that you need for your deck <laughs> they play it for the mustache only you're gonna have to read this card a couple times to like wrap your head that's around fine. it that's fine oh god okay small world is that ganondorf all right, remove one monster in your hand. Choose one monster from your deck that has exactly one of the same type, exactly one of the same type attribute level attack or defense and banish the revealed monster from your hand face down. What the fuck? Okay, then add from the deck to your hand one monster that has exactly one of the same type attribute level attack or defense as the monster chosen from your deck and banish that the card chosen from the deck face down. You can only activate one small world per turn. You're right, I do have to read this multiple times. <laughs> Choose one monster from your deck that has exactly one of the same type, attribute level, attack, or defense. Yo, honestly, that card's probably pretty good. Do you understand how it works is the, is the better question. Okay, I think it does. Okay, I, if I'm understanding correctly, let me, let me try to rehash this in Hearthstone terms. I'm choosing one thing. I'm choosing a monster from my hand, a minion from my hand. Okay. Okay. Then I go through my deck to find a minion that has one of the following type attribute level attack or defense. Okay. Okay. Then that minion from my hand is banished. It is gone. Then I, from my deck, I can find another card. I'm assuming that has the exact same or exactly one of the same type attribute level attack or defense as the monster that I just chose from my deck. Then I banish the previous card I chose from my deck face down. And then I add that card to my hand. Right? Am I get, I'm, are you so, I'm so I'm so lost in the sauce. <laughs> I, I, I think I understand how it works. I think I, I, I think. Okay, I'm gonna go with. I do think I. Uh, if, yeah, if I'm okay. understanding this correctly, like I think I am, I would say this card's actually pretty great. You look for a card in your deck that you don't mind banishing, but has the same attribute type level attack of a card you actually want. And then you get to draw that card into your hand. That's how I'm assuming this is going to work. So this is probably a very strong card. Yeah, you're right. This card is Woo! really good. Not every deck needs Small World, but like in decks where you're like, I need to find this card or I really do need the consistency boost. But yeah, like Small Worlds, it's pretty nutty. Next card. <sighs> okay. Oh my god. Now we're getting... Bistel? To- <laughs> Mega- Bistel? <laughs> Bistel? What is it? Bistel? Bistel. <laughs> Bistel? Dude, I listen. You should have seen me trying to fucking name the Titans for hearts on this expansion, which you what will see soon. What the fuck's a Titan? <laughs> You'll see soon. Um, Mag, what is it? Magnum Hut. Magnum what the Magnum fuck? Is, what, <laughs> what is this? This thing? is how you could tell we're in the modern card section. What is what is this? Like a dragon that's like chained down. The do you fuck want? Is do you this? want? Do you want the, the 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 literal explanation or the lore explanation? What? Give me the literal. Uh, the lore explanation. <laughs> yeah, it's an it's an enslaved dragon. <laughs> Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Unlucky, bro. Okay, uh, well, let's see if it's good. Uh, you could target one light or dark monster in either graveyard. So that means your opponent too, right? Yes. 
um, banish it. And if you do special summon this card from your hand, wait, hold on a sec. <laughs> you, does this card have to be on board for you to use this effect? No, you apply. No, you use the effect in your hand. Oh, this is a quick effect. If your opponent controls a monster, if this card is special summoned, you can activate this effect during the end phase of this turn. Add one dragon monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand, except this. You can only use each effect of this once per turn. You can target one light or dark monster. Okay, so like, is there an archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh that is like light and dark? There are a lot of light and dark archetypes in Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? This is so weird. I, I'm assuming if that's the case, if you said it like that, then this card might actually be playable because I was thinking of it as like a tech card, but if it's so often that you go against light or dark monsters and you can just banish them, that means like maybe you stop your opponent from winning the game. That's pretty great. And because you could do this from hand, that's pretty nutty. I think this is good. Like if if there is a competitive light or dark monster that needs a monster and you just fucking say psych, you're gone. But it has to be in the graveyard. It's probably fine. I would go with fine. Uh, OK, <laughs> so I'm going to give you so I'm going to give you a little uh, a little oh, mathematical breakdown. So okay. in Yu-Gi-Oh for that. They have six main attributes. They have earth, fire, wind, light and dark. OK, you could take every single monster in the earth, water, fire, and wind category, add them all up, and there would still be less, <laughs> less than dark oh. monsters. Oh, there's a lot of them. Okay. There's a, there's okay. a lot of light and dark monsters. And just because okay. Konami pushes those, arc, those, uh, those typings, uh, not typings, those attributes so hard, uh, Magnumut, as well as the entire Bistio line, which basically just all share the effect of, haha, get rid of a light and dark. Yeah, this card is insane. <laughs> like, it's yeah, a, it's a okay, free summon. Okay. It's a free surge. He's got a big booty. Like, oh my god, this card's <laughs> disgusting. Bro, look at his ass. Uh, god, oh my god. Kashtira? <laughs> Kashtira. Oh god. What is this thing? What? I, I don't. Do you want the Do you want the literal answer or do you want the lore answer? <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> they just look so like it's it's weird because Hearthstone minions are so like you, you can identify what they are just from looking at the art, right? Like 99% of the time. Sometimes you're like, what the hell is that? But it, almost every single time you send me a photo, I'm like, what the frick are they doing in this art? Okay. Uh, if you control no monsters, you could special summon this card from your hand. You can only use each of the following effects of this card once per turn. During your main phase, you can add one cash tier. What did you say? Cash tier? Cash tier, yeah. Cash tier, okay. Monster from your deck to your hand. When this card declares an attack or if your opponent activates a monster's effect, except during the damage step, you can target one face up monster your opponent controls and banish it face down. I mean, this card seems nuts. <laughs> I you, you don't even need to really do anything. You could just special summon that you have no monster in the board. You say fucking goodbye to one of their minions, basically. So good. Phenomenal. Yeah, it's good, right? 100%. Yeah, this card is $140 when it came out. <laughs> yeah, this card's is pretty nutty. 140 bucks for this you had to buy three. This is what this is what Konami wants from you. Yeah, because I guess you like you put three of these in your deck. You 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 play the first one, then you draw the second one, and then you just keep going. Yeah. It also doesn't help that this uh, is part of an entire archetype. So this is technically a one card combo that ends on like a board with a banish and a negate. God, I hate Yu-Gi-Oh, man. Why do we play this game? Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. I keep coming I back. Know, it's just like League uh. of Legends. <laughs> Last card. This card came out, I think, like a week ago. <laughs> uh, you're finished. Trap. What the hell? If oh my god. <laughs> text i love Yu -Gi oh i love reading Jesus. comprehension it's just like the sats <laughs> card reviews in hearthstone 20 minutes max card reviews in Yu-Gi-Oh, three weeks maybe i think I, I think i tried doing a card review for like every single card in the set and i think it literally took me like three hours with it all edited down and then i never did a card review ever again because i'm yeah, like fuck this sounds... there's like 120 yeah. <laughs> cards in the set i'm out okay uh so trap card if 10 or more cards and or effects have been activated during this turn okay holy that's a lot special summon this card as an effect monster as a cyber's dark level 10 attack and defense of 3000 this card is also still a trap but set it in your spell and trap zone during your end phase okay <laughs> Once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect, while well, this card is in your monster zone, quick effect, you can destroy as many cards as your opponent controls as possible, then set this card. What the fuck? Okay, hold on. I got to read this card like eight more times. If 10 or more <laughs> cards and or effects have been activated during this turn. Okay. You could special summon this card as an effect monster. Okay. Then it has the stats. This is also still a trap card, but set it in your spell and trap zone during your end phase. Okay. So you special summon this in your monster zone, but at the end of the turn, it goes to your trap zone. Yeah. 
Okay. And then once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect, well, this card is in your monster zone. Quick effect. You could. Okay, I understand. So the way you want to play this is if your opponent is playing infinite cards on their turn, you slam this down and say psych, and then they fucking lose all their cards. Yeah, it's like they're finished. But, oh, shit. <laughs> Yo, sick design. I mean, okay. Dude, what the fuck? How often does your opponent play 10 or more cards or effects? Maybe it's way more common than I think it is. I don't know. If it's common and like you have this in your hand, I guess they literally are finished. So the, the entire analysis of this card is like, if they do play more than those cards, if they play 10 or more cards, this card's probably pretty great. But if they don't, this card's useless, right? Like you're literally holding a dead card in your hand. Probably in a more tournament setting, if I had to guess, this card's probably insane. All right. So in Yu Yu-Gi-Oh is a, an extremely combo based game. Like right. every in every single format in Yu-Gi-Oh's history, like a combo de like combo decks have always been historically amazing. So people are activating way more than ten cards or effects per turn. So oh. getting this card uh, getting this card out is actually like super duper easy. The problem is oh, oh okay like this this card does have like a pretty okay effect. The problem is right. is just it requires so much investment on your opponent part. And if they know that you have it set, which, by the way, it resets itself, so not like they're playing into that shit again. It's, yeah, yeah, it's just not cooking. Interesting. Okay. I So, in other words, like, there are just, there are other cards that do the exact same thing, just but better. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Wow, you would think that effect would be so strong, but yeah, I guess you're right. What I don't know. I just, I just saw the cute anime girl on it, and I was like, yeah, this is the greatest that, card That's of my all new time. favorite card. <laughs> this, oh this, I'm going to base my whole personality around this card. Holy shit, dude, it's been so long and I'm already mentally exhausted. <laughs> Look, man, I, I know it's hard for a Hearthstone player out here having to read more than <laughs> one line of text per day. Dude, see, that's why you're wrong. I don't even read, man. Like, I'm pretty sure my brain turns off when I play Hearthstone now. Uh, I like, I don't know. Pretty I, little it, pictures. <laughs> I see green card. I go like that's that's what it is. I can play uh, actually, this. I, it's it's crazy how much Hearthstone has trained me to be like that's what the card looks like. I'm just gonna play it. Like it's it's weird. It's it's, like it's just Pavlov's probably not okay. <laughs> it's fucking oh my literally, dude. I see. I open legendary. I get so excited. Serotonin boost out of control. Fucking Christ. 